Hey guys, so as you would have seen from the thumbnail, I have way too many books I want to finish before the end of 2020. But I am hopeful I have limited this stack and chosen the like top priorities. So I think I have 14 books here. I'm hopeful I can manage it. I'm spending November focusing on non-fiction November and Indigathon, so I haven't included any of those books here, although I will link those videos up in the card so you can go and check those out if you would like. I may manage to slip a couple of these books in throughout November, but if not, these books will be the main focus for me for December. So I'll split these into like mini groups that probably only make sense to me, but I kind of wanted some way to sort of structure this video. So I have these first three. I keep saying first instead of first. I have these first three, and these are the ones that I have thought about the most throughout the year, books I feel like I'm gonna give five stars to, and books that every month I thought about putting them on my TBR and for just stupid reasons I haven't got to them. So the first one of those is Song of Solomon by Toni Morrison. I have over the last couple of years read The Bluest Eye and Sula and so I decided to carry on in sort of publication order and try and do at least one a year and it's now November and I still haven't managed to get to this one. So I've heard amazing things about Song of Solomon out of all of her books, this is one I hear people talk about the most alongside Beloved. So I really want to get to this one and her previous two that I've read have both been focused on female protagonists and I think this one follows a man so it's going to be interesting to see how like different it feels told from a male perspective. So have to get to that one, I'm going to really, really annoy myself if I don't. And then this one I bought myself in January because it came out in North America I think in 2019 and I thought it sounded amazing. I heard so many people put it in their top books of the year video and I just felt like I would love it and I've had it since January and haven't actually read it. And that is Cantaras by Carolina de Robertes. This is a queer novel about four or five women who meet up in late 1970s in Uruguay and they go and spend time together near a beach and sort of find this place to be safe from all of the um, the violence and also it, I believe at the time, I'm not sure if it still is, but was at least illegal to be gay in Uruguay. So they're trying to fight to live authentic lives and I've heard this is a really beautiful, heartfelt story and I feel like I could really love it. So I definitely need to read that one. And this last one is a short story collection. Again, I saw lots of people put this in their favourite books of the year, I think in 2019. And again, this is a North American release. And that is Sabrina and Karina by Kelly Fajardo Anstein. And this is a short story collection. I've been really rubbish at reading short story collections. So I really want to dive back in. And I feel like this is one I could really love. I think these are all um, realist stories. And it says this follows Latina characters of indigenous ancestry as they navigate the land, the way they navigate their lives with caution, grace and quiet force, which I think sounds absolutely beautiful. So I really want to read that. Then we have a stack of fantastical books. I always veer towards reading um, sort of fantasy and historical fiction more in the colder months. I just feel like they're very atmospheric and so they suit this time of year. So I have a couple of library books actually that I just really like the sound of so I would like to get to before the year is out. This first one I just saw Rincey over at Rincey Reads talk about this in the last few weeks on one of her Friday reads. Again, I'll link that in the card so you can go and check it out. Um, and that is Thorn by Intasar Kanani. I think that's how you say it. And this is a um, YA fantasy. And I'm always a bit dubious about YA fantasy because a lot of the time it's pretty fast paced. But one of the things Rincey said in her video was that this was quite slow paced for YA fantasy. And that's why she particularly enjoyed it. So I immediately went and had a look and found out that my library has it. I think this follows a princess and she is robbed of her identity and I think somebody else starts to like act as her and then she starts to prefer being not the princess. So she has to decide whether to let this, I don't know, like bad force take over the kingdom pretending to be her and keep the life she's enjoying or whether to step back into the role of being a princess to save her kingdom. And I just thought that sounded really intriguing and just love the fact that it sounds like a, a sort of slow fantasy, which I always enjoy. And then to be honest, when I was looking for that one, I saw the spine of this one and I thought, oh, I like the very bright red colours. This is called The Harm Tree by Rose Edwards. And when I turned it round, I was like, 
this looks amazing. I have to know what this is about. It says, nine years ago, two princes waged a bloody civil war for the right to rule Angard. The younger prince took the throne and outlawed the ancient beliefs. New religion replaced the barbaric traditions and finally, there's peace but some wounds never heal. And then I think you follow two girls um, as are sent away by their families and they have to tread separate paths when they find uh, dangerous methods and they're used as tools for the opposing war. So yeah, I don't really know much about what this is about. To be honest, it's a cover pickup. And it may sound odd putting a book that I've only just heard about and don't know much about on my end of year TBR but I feel like it's been, a, it's been a shit year, hasn't it? And I definitely love escaping into fantasy when things in the real world feel shit. And um, YA fantasy in particular is just really easy to get lost in. And I do love binge reading and it's not something I do a lot of with reading literary fiction predominantly. So it's nice to sometimes pick up a sort of YA fantasy and just be able to binge it in like a day or two. So I'm hoping this could work for that. And then this is one of the oldest books I have in terms of I've had it for like five years and still haven't read it and I have no real excuse to be honest um, because I love the sound of it and that's Prickle Moon by Juliet Marulia. So I've read maybe seven Juliet Marulia books. I've read the full like Daughter of the Forest series and then I've read um, the first book in the Blackthorn and Grimm series and enjoyed them. And um, This is a short story collection and I just really like the sound of fantastical short stories. I've read lots of sort of weird, fabulous short stories, but I don't think I've ever read any fantasy short stories. Um, and so this is a mixture of, it says, stories at once timeless and ancient, yet shot through with the silver veins of modern life, entertaining, inviting, lyrical, and lovely. And I think this could just be like a really cozy read. Like one of these stories is all about hedgehogs. Like why don't I want to read that? So. I think this could be perfect for this time of year. And then lastly, I know this has had really mixed, perhaps more negative reviews, but I did really enjoy the first book in this trilogy and I found it super cozy and I think it has the perfect vibe for this time of year. So I'm hoping this one does as well. And that is volume two, The Book of Dust and The Secret Commonwealth by Philip Pullman. So I really loved um, the first book. I really enjoyed it. I, I felt like when it got a bit more plotty towards the end I wasn't as in love but I really loved the cosy vibe of like being near the river and being near the inn. I just thought that was beautiful. And yeah I heard people say they had a lot of issues with this one but I did read the first chapter when I got it and did still feel like it had that really cosy vibe and I just feel like it might be nice to read a really sort of chunky atmospheric book around this time of year. So let me know if you read this and if you have what you thought of it and um, how you think it compares to the previous book in the book of dust and then i have four books that i was kindly sent by the publishers throughout this year i have quite a few more than this but these are the ones that are sort of priority for me um, if i had your face by francis char i don't think i need to talk much about this i've heard everybody raving about it it's about um four or five women in south korea their stories intercept and they're connected by like the idea of um, beauty standard in South Korea. I think that sounds really interesting. Um, Black Sunday by Tola Rotimi Abraham. This is about two, I think, twin sisters who were living in Lagos in, or Lagos, sorry, in 1996. And I think they somehow get separated. Um, and one of them, yes, the household shutters and they get separated and it follows um, their estrangement and how they both go their separate ways and yeah I've heard good things about this one intrigued then we have um, Frying Plantain by Salika Reed Benter this is an interconnected short story collection about a um, woman who um, lives in Canada and has a lot of conflict about her Jamaican heritage um, so this is a story um, all these stories some of them are focused in her life in Jamaica some of them are focused in her life in Canada and again I think this sounds really intriguing and would like to read more interconnected short story collections. Um, then we have True Story by Kate Reed Petty. I had never heard of this and the publisher asked if I wanted to be sent it and I just thought it sounded brilliant. Um, I think this follows a sexual assault that happens and then the how the victim is dealing with it years on with a friend but this says this book could be read as like lots of different things like um, mystery, um, coming of age, literary, horror, and I think that sounds really intriguing. And it's been published with um, all these different covers to show all the different sides to it. So I think this could be um, really compulsive. And I find books that comment on 
um, sexual assault and misogyny um, really interesting. And these last two are by two of my favourite authors and I just think it would be remiss of me not to get to them before the end of the year. So uh, Maggie O'Farrell's books have been re-released in beautiful editions, so I'm very happy about because I didn't love the previous editions, so I've sort of re-bought some of my copies in these nice ones. Um, and I've been reading them in chronological order, except for Hamnet, which I cheated with. Um, so the next one for me to get to, which is the third novel, is The Distance Between Us by Maggie O'Farrell. And this follows a man and a woman who are living in completely different parts of the world and their stories somehow converge, and I think this is sort of globe-trotting novel. I don't really care what it's about, I just want to read more Maggie O'Farrell. And then lastly, I have Utopia Avenue by David Mitchell. This came out earlier in the year and I was having um, problems then and I couldn't hold a big heavy book like this, so I haven't got to it. This is a weird one. I love David Mitchell and it's crazy to me that I didn't pick this up the day it came out because I've done that with his previous novels for like years. But I, don't, I wouldn't pick this up if it wasn't written by David Mitchell um, because it's actually about a group of uh, a band called Utopia Avenues who emerge as a um, psychedelic band in the 1960s and it follows their story and like all the people around them in that movement and I find that I think that sounds pretty uninteresting to me but it's David Mitchell and I'm worried that if I keep leaving this I won't get to it just because I don't like the sound of it but I love his books so I'm hoping I could still really love this one and it's very very chunky so yeah those are all the books I'd like to read before the end of the year please let me know if you've read any of these if you like the sound of them and I'd also love to know what you're hoping to read before the end of the year and also if you like reading like certain types of books this time of year. Like I said, I really like reading fantasy and historical fiction. Do you guys or do you guys like reading something else? Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.